Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to this edition of Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today, we're going to be talking about creating template files. For those of you in project management, you go to a lot of trouble in creating your projects. And in most cases, you repeat very similar type projects over and over again. So as you know, in this series, we're trying to show you everything from A to Z in how you can arrange your projects in Microsoft Project. So in construction, for example, in my area of expertise, uh, we look at a number of projects. Let's pretend that you're a, I don't know, a renovation contractor. Everybody can relate to a renovation contractor. You, you either are one or you get stuff done in your home. And so you're always dealing with either dealing with a renovation contractor or you are one. And if I was a renovation contractor and I did a lot of projects, I would look at the types of projects I typically do and the types of projects I schedule. So for example, if I schedule bathrooms, kitchens, basements, additions, decks, uh, custom homes, you know, these are all in the mix of things that a renovation new home constructor might do. I would have a template file for each one of those examples. For a bathroom, for a kitchen, the activities that you do are very, very similar from project to project. Now they differ, the materials you differ will differ, the durations will differ because, you know, you might have a bathroom that is five foot by 10 foot, or you might have a bathroom that's 15 foot by 15 foot, a grand master bathroom. So durations are gonna change, but the actual stuff you do is not gonna change dramatically. The other thing is like this example that I have in front of you here is that we have a project that has a work breakdown structure. And so if I do larger projects, just think of that. Well, I create this work breakdown structure and the work breakdown structure for similar type projects is going to be very similar. So it'd be very nice if I don't have to recreate the wheel every time. The way I would probably do it is when I plan a new project, this is, you know, there's different ways of doing it and I'll show you a couple of um, different schools of thought on things. One is you create like a, a bathroom schedule like you were for somebody and you think it really well through. And before you start the project, you save it as a template file. Uh, and then it's good to go for you for future projects. And then every time you open this template file, you save as the new project name. And that will save you a significant amount of time. Like on a small project like that, I hear from smaller contractors, I don't have time to do a schedule. I think you don't have time not to do a schedule, right? You should be doing a schedule because it saves you a lot of time in the long run. You can actually communicate effectively with clients and with all the trades that you're trying to set up. You can see how you're doing compared to your plan, but it only works if you can do it really fast. And you can do it really fast if you have a template. You can just go into it and make the adjustments for that particular project. You can adjust your durations. You could add activities if there's new stuff that's not in your typical bathroom. Uh, so it's a great starting point to have that work breakdown structure and to have the typical activities. Also, recently I did a YouTube video on the Checklist Manifesto, which is an excellent book. If you didn't get a chance, take a look at uh, that uh, video. And what are you doing when you create a template? You're creating a checklist. This has already got like a whole bunch of items in it so that you don't miss it. Yes, it's gonna have some items that you don't need. You could delete those items. You're reviewing it, you're adjusting it, you're making it to suit the new project. Saves you a really, really large amount of time. I think it's one of the most efficient things that you can do that'll make your work much more effortless, so to speak. So if we're going to um, save as a template, well, you can do it several ways. Well, number one, I, like I said, I would probably put in all of my activities. I would also, you know, I've talked about this in other, uh, in other uh, videos. You can actually share a resource pool amongst projects, but let's say you just wanna keep a independent list of resources. Well, you could slide to the left, go to the resource sheet, 
you could create your typical subcontractors. You could have this list of all the subcontractors and all the employees that you have and just have that sort of there in this template file. And you could actually just have this in a starting point template that you use before you even create a template file. In other words, you could have all your resources. And the other thing that I would probably have in just like a blank start point file for that is I would also have um, all of my calendar days, my holidays set up. So I would, under the change working time area, I would put in all of my holidays going forward for 10 years maybe, and I would have them all there and in that first start point. So now I've got all the resources that I typically use and I've got uh, all of the holidays going 10 years. This takes a little bit of time to create. I think I'll do another video on showing step-by-step -step how to do that for like a 10-year period. Uh, that's great. You still have to make minor adjustments to it because there's always these nuanced differences that take place, but it's really good to have that as a starting point. So you've got all your resources, you've got all of your holidays, and you could save that as a template file. How do we save it as a template file? You go File, Save As, and wherever you want to save it to, right? And the key is here where it says Save As Type, you can put down as a project template. So you click project template and you can say that you want this particular file as a project template. Now I would probably, like I said, just start with a blank file, put all my resources that I always use and not in every project, but that my company uses, my contacts and that sort of thing. Cause it means nothing if they're in your resource sheet. It's only when you apply them that it means something, right? And so then I have them all there to draw from. Again, when you do your project, you'll have some new resources you can add to that, etc. But you'll have a good baseline of resources created. And I would have all of my dates. And then I would do save it as a template. So all I got is that to start with. And then when I'd create a new template, I would use that as my starting point. But back to my point, I've got this larger file here. It says new, new township administrative building. I'm going to go save. I, I put here key project template. Now this this particular project has stuff in it, right? So when I do save as template, let's say that you did a project and you actually updated it and you thought it was a pretty good project to now use as a template going forward. You can, if you save it as a template, you can say what stuff you don't want saved and it won't save stuff. Like the value, if I had saved this as a baseline schedule, and I didn't want the baselines, I wanted the actuals, then I could say value of all baselines, or I could say actual values, right? You can choose what you don't want it to save, and then it won't save that. And then that saves that information, and it won't save the baseline. So if there was a baseline, and I go here, and I go check my variances, you see that there's no baseline in it anymore. Um, so it would clear that out. And then this would be um, saved as an MPT file, which is a Microsoft Project Template file. So the next time I want to start a new project, I just have to open this file and then go File, Save As, and then I can call it something else, right? I could call it, um, I can call it D, Practice D, and now I can save it as type regular MPP uh, type project. And now I've got something new that I could go into and work from. To be honest with you though, I kind of, uh, when it comes to saving it as a uh, template file, I usually like to not have <clears throat> resources, costs that are all applied throughout and that sort of thing, because I think that's kind of unique to your new project. So I think a template is good to use where you've got the activities in and maybe you've got the database basically of the resources that you use. So you don't, you don't want to enter all this stuff over and over again, right? It just makes it a lot easier as a starting point. And you know, if I was a home builder, that's what you do. You have a standard template. This is how we do our projects. And it's like a giant checklist. Of course, like I said, you got to go through the drawings, the specifications, do all the unique things, make sure that it makes sense. Uh, 
being a professor, I run into students, they, you know, they get these templates online and they think that, oh, I just got to copy and paste and now I'm good. My project's done. And then I start looking at it and I'm going, uh, this particular project doesn't have, uh, doesn't require, uh, this bathroom or this particular project doesn't have three floors. Where'd you get the template from? Right. You've got to still go through it and make sure it suits your project. But it saves you a lot of time is my point. And so if you're doing re repetitive, similar type projects, that would be my recommendation for creating a, a template. And so that's what I really wanted to cover today. And I hope that's answered your question about template files. They will save you a lot of time. They're not hard to create. Do a calendar once for 10 years out, you're done. You don't have to create calendars every time you go into a new project, right? It saves a lot of time. You do have to make adjustments, but make a template. Enjoy. And if you like this video, please click subscribe. And you can also view some of my other uh, videos on the Microsoft Project playlist and click the notifications link and you'll see new videos as they come up. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.